Welcome back to Fox Eyes on the Hill live this Sunday morning. You know, this week, Virginia Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger called for new leadership in the House Democratic majority after strongly criticizing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi for not holding a vote on stock trades before midterms. We want to bring in our political panel this morning, Jeff Mason. Familiar face here is the White House correspondent for Reuters and Mitchell Miller, of course, is the longtime Capitol Hill correspondent for WTOP. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Uh, Mitchell, let me start with you. Abigail Spanberger is now facing re-election in a newly redrawn Northern Virginia district. This has been viewed as a bellwether race that the Democrats have to win to hold on to the majority. How much of this has to do with actual anger over this bill not getting a vote? How much this has to do with showing that as a Democratic woman, Congresswoman, she's ready to go up against people like Nancy Pelosi in her own party? I think there's a little of both. Uh, obviously, there's some anger that her legislation didn't get brought up. But I was at the news conference that Nancy Pelosi was asked about this on Friday, and she was not happy to be asked about it, frankly, that uh, you have Abigail Spanberger in a tough race, as you said, in the 7th District against a Republican. Yesley Vega has been totally trying to tie her to Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Spanberger, uh, over the last several months, she's always been critical of Pelosi, but this really takes it a step farther because how often do you have a Democrat go after the most you know, powerful Democrat in the House right before a midterm election. So I think it's a calculated move on Spanberger's part. I think a lot of people were surprised by how strong the language was there. And uh, Speaker Pelosi basically said, look, I'm, I'm going, she was asked, are you going to be here after the midterm elections? And she bristled and she said, I'm concentrated on the political races at hand and we're going to try to win the House. She never really does seem to answer that question when she's She asked. does not. Uh, Jeff, one of the things the president likes to say a lot is about how he is in a battle for the soul uh, of the country. But is there a battle still going on underway for the soul of the Democratic Party early on in this administration? You know, you had, uh, you know, the, the, the struggles between the, the moderates and the liberals in the party. You have somebody like Abigail Spanberg calling out the speaker. How seriously does the White House take this when they're trying to present this unified image moving into the midterms in a couple of weeks? Well, I don't think they love it. Um, and I, I think that there probably is, uh, you know, that battle that you're referring to is, is, a, is a dynamic in both parties. And it's certainly one that uh, the White House has confronted I think, ironically, a little bit of that has moved uh, to the side, at least legislatively and in certain terms of some of the successes that the White House had uh, this mm -hmm. summer on, on a, a few different bills, in, in particular the, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, the, mm -hmm. which, which got over climate change, uh, that got climate change rather over the finish line and, and some other things. But it's still there, yeah. and, and these things come up around, around election time. You're going to be traveling tomorrow yes. with the president as he begins uh, what's going to be two trips to uh, hurricane-damaged areas in Puerto Rico and then later in the week in Florida. How important is it for this White House to demonstrate their ability to deal with these things? Is it one of the measures that people make of an administration, how they handle hurricanes? Because obviously you look back to Katrina with George W. Bush. Yeah. You look back to some of the disasters during the Trump administration. Obviously, presidents get judged on this stuff. They absolutely do. They absolutely do. It's very important. It's very important for any White House. I mean, apropos Puerto Rico, I can remember when President Trump went there and, and was criticized for throwing paper towels uh, the way that he did. I don't think you'll see President Biden be doing that tomorrow in Puerto Rico, but showing up is very important for him on a broader scale, but also politically. You know, Mitchell, one of the things we have heard, you know, in the last years, maybe since Hurricane Sandy, is that when there was a natural disaster in one part of the country, sometimes you'll have members of Congress from other parts of the country start talking about how much it's going to cost. Now, you know, back during Sandy, some of those voices came from the regions that are being hit right now. Do we hear any of that right now from other regions saying, wait a minute, you weren't so high on this money when Hurricane Sandy hit, but here you are now looking for funds for this disaster. Have we gotten over that? I think we have gotten over that. Obviously, Governor DeSantis in Florida getting a lot of attention for the fact that he was with the Freedom Caucus in Congress, and he was initially totally against any money going to Sandy. Now here he is, hat in hand, saying we need money for Florida. I think, though, lawmakers right now, before the midterms, are being pretty quiet about that, and they're letting everything just go where it may, and they want people to be helped in Florida. There was an incident this past week where the president was at a public event. 
He was calling out for members of Congress. One of the members he apparently appeared to be looking for was uh, Congresswoman Jackie Wroblewski, who tragically passed away in a car crash. Jeff, I believe you were there. Um, there was this moment in the White House press briefing following this where the White House press secretary was asked repeatedly about this, and she kept saying that the, this was on the president's mind somehow, mm -hmm. that he was thinking about her. Did you, did you get the sense he was thinking about her, or did he actually think she was alive and in the room somewhere? Well, I, I wasn't there. But okay, I, I oh, excuse me. That's all right, but the answer is he misspoke. You know, he made a mistake, and I think the, the White House just didn't want to say that, and they didn't want to say he had a, what my mother would probably call a senior moment mm -hmm. um, because that will be used against him. But I think that sort of doubling down and saying that it was at the top of his mind didn't really work as an explanation either. But at the same time, the reaction to this is, is, is interesting. Why, why can't you just say, hey, look, he made a mistake. He's human. He's a human being, just like all of us. Right. I just made a mistake 30 seconds ago saying that you were in the room for this. We all make mistakes. It happens. Exactly. Mitchell, is, are they hypersensitive to this because they believe that if somebody sees something like that, they're immediately going to ascribe things to it that have nothing to do with reality? I, I think so, because, I mean, you could see during that news conference, they did not want to admit that he made a mistake. And at one point, uh, Senate Minority Leader McConnell's spokesman just said, why don't you just say... He misspoke and be done with it. And sometimes they just don't want to make that admission. Okay, as we head into this week, uh, these trips go forward with these uh, hurricane visits. Obviously, uh, the president feels like they've done a good job on these things so far. I think so. I mean, it's and as you were saying before, it's important to him to show governing, uh, trying to get money to these places right away. It doesn't matter, for example, that he's got some pretty significant political differences with right. Governor DeSantis. He wants to get the money there for the Florida. Jeff Mason from Reuters and Mitchell Miller from the great WTOP. We thank both of you for being on our political panel this morning.